Look at a map of the eastern United States on your phone. Zoom in on the long chain of hills running from Alabama up through Pennsylvania and beyond. Then look at the western side of the map. You see tall, sharp peaks spread wide across states like Colorado and Wyoming. Now here is the thing that bugs people. The east has older mountains, but they look smaller. The west has younger mountains, but they look huge. That feels backwards. Most folks also notice another pattern when they travel. In the east, roads and towns bunch up in narrow valleys. In the west, you get big open basins, then steep walls, then high peaks. People argue about why. Some blame politics. Some blame people leaving. Some blame bad luck. But the land itself gives a cleaner answer. It is not a personal failure. It is not your granddad's fault. It is not a vote you made. It's rock and time doing what rock and time always do. Here is the mystery we are going to answer in plain words. Why do the eastern ranges look worn down, yet still shape where people live and work? And why do western peaks still look raw and sharp, like they are still under construction? You can see the results today with your own eyes. You can feel it in your truck when you climb a grade. You can see it in the way fog sits in a valley at dawn. You can see it in the way a river cuts a gap through a ridge, like a saw line. For decades, nobody could figure out why the rivers didn't just go around the mountains. It seemed like the water was doing something impossible. Now we know exactly why this happens. The Appalachian Mountains are 480 million years old. That is 480 million years ago, before dinosaurs existed, when only simple sea creatures lived in the water. These peaks are six times older than the Rockies. They have stood through more time than we can even imagine. When they first formed, they were not the low hills you see today. They used to be taller than the Himalayas. They stood miles high into the sky. But wind and rain wear things down. Over almost half a billion years, the weather has been eating away at the rock. These mountains have survived 480 million years, while others have crumbled to nothing. They are the longevity champions of the world. They are still standing because they have a core of very hard rock. This hard rock formed deep underground when the continents crashed together. The ground buckled and the land rose up from the collision. Evidence shows these rocks were once part of Africa. At one time, there was no Atlantic Ocean. Pennsylvania and North Africa were neighbors. The mountains we see today are just the roots of that massive ancient range. 300 million years ago, before dinosaurs, this land sat right on the equator. It was covered in tropical rainforests. That is where the coal comes from. The dead plants from those forests were buried and pressed into the ground. Every piece of coal found in a mine today is a piece of that ancient tropical world. But as the mountains rose, something strange happened with the water. If you drive through Pennsylvania and look at the Susquehanna River, you'll see it cuts straight through the ridges. Water usually takes the easy path. It should flow around a mountain, not through it. For a long time, this was a giant puzzle. Scientists couldn't explain how a river could have the power to slice through a mountain range like a knife through cake. It looked like the river was there first, but that didn't make sense if the mountains were hundreds of millions of years old. Now, we have the proof. They started by drilling core samples deep into the earth. They used radioactive dating to check the age of the rocks. This works like a geological clock. There is a metal called uranium in the rock that slowly turns into lead over time. By measuring how much lead is in the sample, they can tell exactly when the rock formed. They tested the rocks at the top of the mountains and the rocks at the bottom of the riverbeds. They also mapped the floor of the ocean to see how the continents moved. The breakthrough came from seeing how the Atlantic Ocean opened up. 200 million years ago, the giant landmass began to rip apart. As the land pulled away, it created a new ocean. This changed how the land sat on the Earth. 
the weight of the mountains and the movement of the ground caused the crust to flex. Geologists from places like Penn State and Virginia Tech spent years collecting data. They measured how fast water can wear down stone. In places like the New River Gorge in West Virginia, they found something incredible. They measured the rate of erosion. It happens at about one inch every thousand years. That is slower than your fingernails grow. But over 100 million years, that is 16,000 feet of mountain completely worn away. That is enough to turn a peak taller than a skyscraper into a low rolling hill. They found that the rivers were actually maintaining their paths even as the land underneath them was changing. The investigation moved to the mountain gaps. These are the low spots where the river breaks through the ridge. If you look at these gaps, they are perfectly straight. They don't wiggle like a normal river on flat land. This suggested a very strong force was holding the river in place. The researchers looked at the rock layers. They saw that some layers were very hard and some were very soft. This is like a layer cake with some layers of stone and some layers of sponge. The weather and the water eat the sponge layers quickly. The stone layers stay behind. This creates the long ridges we see today. Geography determined everything about where we built our world. When the first people moved through these mountains, they didn't climb over the high peaks. They followed the river gaps. They followed the path the water had already cut for them. If the water hadn't cut those gaps, the mountains would have been an unbreakable wall. You wouldn't have the towns of Harrisburg or Cumberland where they are today. The locations of our cities were decided by where the rock was soft enough for water to bite through. But the real proof came from matching rocks across the Atlantic. Geologists found identical rock layers in Scotland and the eastern United States. Same type, same age, same minerals. Only explanation, these mountains were connected. Scotland and our eastern ridges were one single range before the ocean opened. Three labs tested the rocks and all found perfect matches. This was the smoking gun. It proved that the mountains were part of a global system that existed before the world we know was even formed. The definitive proof came from the river itself. They measured how fast it cuts rock. Then they dated when the modern mountains started their last big push upward. Two million years ago, the land began to rise again. The math was simple. The river was cutting down at the exact same speed the land was rising up. It was like holding a piece of wood against a spinning saw blade. If you push the wood up while the saw spins, the blade stays in the same place but cuts a deep groove. That is what happened here. The rivers were already flowing on a flat plain. When the land started to rise two million years ago, the rivers stayed in their tracks. They sawed through the rising rock. This is why the rivers cut straight through the highest ridges. They were there first. The mountains rose up around them. The mystery is solved because the timing matches perfectly. The case is closed. We know that the eastern landscape looks the way it does because of this race between the rising land and the cutting water. The long calm after the first mountain building allowed this process to sort the rock. The soft layers were removed over and over by rivers and weather. The tough cores and tough ridge layers stayed. That is why you see long, stable ridges today. In the west, the land is still breaking and rising too fast for the rivers to keep up. That is why those peaks look raw. They haven't had the quiet time to let the water do its careful sorting. Your region is not less important because the mountains are lower. It is older and proven. The ridges are not a punishment for the people living there. They are the exposed backbone of the earth that survived every weak layer getting removed. The valleys are not stuck in the past. They are the natural lanes the land created for us. Towns rose where the land opened a doorway and they struggled where the land stayed shut. Geography is permanent on human timescales. These mountains were here 480 million years ago and they will be here long after we are gone. 
Your town sits where it does because of geology that is still there right now. Understanding this permanent landscape makes temporary economic changes feel less personal. It's not a failure of the people. It's the result of physics written in stone. Geography shaped culture for hundreds of years. The ridges forced people to live together in narrow strips of land. This created the close-knit communities of the mountains. In the west, the wide basins led to spread out ranches. Neither way is better. They are just what the rock allowed. The question of why the east looks different is definitively answered. We have the complete geographic explanation. The pattern is fully understood. The ridges and valleys tell a story of survival. The mountains have been worn down, but the hardest parts remain. This is the same for the people who live there. You are living on the durable core of the continent. The mystery of the cut through mountains and the long ridges is over. The rock record and the dating methods have settled the debate forever. Next time you drive through a mountain gap, you are driving through a two million year old saw cut. You are seeing the result of a battle between water and stone that the water eventually won. The land determined where the roads went and where the houses were built. The evidence has proven this beyond any doubt. The case is closed. This completes our understanding of the American landscape and why each region has its own unique face. Geography is the silent hand that guides our history, and it all started with rocks colliding nearly half a billion years ago. The pattern we see today is the direct result of ancient processes that science has now fully documented and explained.